Good morning. Woo! That should wake you up. Welcome to worship, and uh, sorry for the late start. Just a few too many things to get ready today, uh, because it's a full day. Lots of interesting activities, um, and uh, the most important one, of course, is that after the service, we have our congregational picnic, and it's uh, outside on the patio. But I'm going to suggest that if you're finding that too hot, that you just come in to either the narthex or the uh, fellowship hall uh, to eat. You know, don't get sunstroke out there, okay? And uh, we've un unfortunately lost some of our big trees, you know, to age and disease. Um, and we've got new trees growing up, but they're not big enough to provide shade yet. So, so uh, please feel free to uh, stay after the service and join us for some hamburgers and hot dogs and other goodies. And uh, most importantly, for a time of fellowship. And you'll hear about that a little bit more in the service. The only other announcement I want to make is that uh, we are wanting to put out a summer issue of the broadcaster. And we would like a deadline. Um, I think we set it for tomorrow. No, a week from tomorrow. A week from tomorrow. And, uh, and that would be good. John, can you do me a favor? And can you turn the, the monitor on up there? Or Solange, one of you two? We missed that. See, a million details to remember uh, when you're trying to get a service together. Uh, not yet. There we go. We're good. All right. So there. Now I'm going to be quiet, and Pastor Lynn's going to talk, and I'm going to get my head in order. Okay. <laughs> so happy Pride Month. Uh, June is uh, Pride Month in Saskatchewan. And are you wearing that stole because it's Pride Month? Maybe. Okay, because I'm going to change... <laughs> I'm going to change my stole so we can be matchy-matchy. Um, so speaking of Pride Month, uh, Christ Lutheran Church is uh, walking in the Pride Parade, which is June 10th. There's a few folks that have indicated an interest in walking with us. Um, the ELCIC Lutheran uh, group of Lutheran churches uh, is walking together. And we have a vehicle this year. We have somebody who offered to drive a vehicle. So if, you, um, if that's too far to walk, know that you've got the option of riding in a vehicle. Uh, if you're interested in walking in the parade with us, please contact me and then I'll give you the information of uh, where and when we meet. The pr uh, parade starts at noon on Saturday, June 10th, and it runs till about 2 o'clock. The Pride route is on the Queen City, um, uh, Queen City Pride uh, website. Uh, if, you, if I know you're interested, I can send you a link to the, to the parade route. Um, staging starts about 10 a.m., so we gather any kind of between 10.15, 11.30, 11.45, 11 depending on how much you want to chat with folks and whatnot. So that's uh, that coming up this Saturday, and then also um, at the end of the month, um, our national church is meeting in a special church convention slash assembly uh, in Calgary from June 28th to July 2nd. Uh, we, the national church did have a convention in 2022 that was supposed to be in person, but because of COVID concerns, it was online, uh, but we still wanted to gather in person. So this is considered a special convention and it's also a slash assembly because we'll be also gathering with our, um, our uh, the Anglican church who are also gathering for their uh, assembly is what they call it. And uh, we'll have a delegate blessing at the end of the month. And uh, Roberts Frederick from Reverend Dr. Mark Jerry and myself are representing the Saskatchewan Synod uh, at this convention. And of course, as usual, we will uh, share with you uh, what we learned and experienced at the convention when we return. And then so two fantastic announcements. One is that Ida Cudmore uh, celebrated 90 years of life on uh, June 3rd, so that was yesterday. So Ida, I really hope you're watching. I know that she has a, a, a grandchild that has set her up to watch the services online. I just saw Ida last week. Um, she looks fantastic and uh, gets around a bit with a walker just for stability. Uh, but we had a lovely conversation and I brought her communion and she looks in fantastic health. And uh, she's happy, but of course she misses Wes. Uh, and also, Irvin and Edna Wentland celebrated 70 years of marriage on May 29th. So there they are. So lots of great things to celebrate. So we're having a special 
uh, burger lunch just for you folks after church. <laughs> Those are all my announcements. Let's just take a few moments of quiet reflection before we begin our worship. I'll invite you to stand for the call to worship. Gathered in the name of Jesus Christ, inspired by the Holy Spirit and blessed by God. We come to worship one holy God. O oh God, our own God, how wonderful is your name in all the earth. Your majesty is the music of the starry skies, yet even children of dust can sing your praises. In the name of the healer, the provider, and the enabler, let your gratitude and joy be made known. O oh God, our God, how won wonderful is your name in all the earth. I'll invite you to join me in an invocation prayer. Let us pray. Sovereign creator of earth and sky, savior always with us, spirit sweeping over the waters, Renew our hearts today, surround us with grace, fill us with wonder and awe, so we may honor you with our gifts of love and praise and worship you with our whole life. Amen. For our gathering hymn, we're going to do an African hymn called uh, Come All You People, and we're going to do it more stylistically appropriate. So. We're going to do this without accompaniment other than the, the drum. And uh, I think many of you have heard this before, so here's how it goes. I'll shut off this mic so it doesn't. to please join with me in the prayer of confession. Gracious God, you have given us the world, yet too often we have taken it for granted and failed to respect your great gift. We have received authority by thought of power. We have received responsibility, but decided it belonged to someone else. We have received your calling but considered it control. It is easy, O oh God, to take the power and leave the responsibility. It is easy to forget that disciples are made in many ways, not just our own. We have not always remembered that you have entrusted your cherished creation to us. We have not always remembered that the word entrusted includes trust. We have not always believed that you have trusted us and that you trust us still. Remind us, O oh God, that we are part of creation, not separate from it, that we are part of your people, not separate from them. Forgive us when we take your gifts and your people for granted and help us start again. Amen. 
hear these words of assurance. When we forget our blessings, we have only to look to God to find them again. We have only to remember that God already blesses us, already loves us, already cares for us. God is with us to the end of the age. God's presence will be made full again, and so will our hearts. Amen. Please be seated. So now we have a special, um, I don't know, I'm going to call it a special event. Wilf Leipy uh, just turned 90 himself a few days ago. And Wilf wanted to give his uh, testimony in song, we could put it, this morning. And so he's going to sing some songs for you, but uh, three of them, the uh, chorus, uh, we're going to ask the congregation to join in. So the words will be on the screen and, uh, and sing along uh, with Wilf when we uh, hit those choruses. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to Wilf take it away here. Thank you. Thank you for indulging me. Uh, what's the big deal about turning 90, you might think? Well, Google says that only 4.2% of Canadians have reached the age of 90 or more. So it is kind of a personal club, private club, isn't it? And uh, Beth's mother joined it, and Ida Cudmore last week, this week. So uh, I understand, Beth, that your mother had quite a party yesterday, and that she had pie, pie and cake. Now, I think one of us, I had pie last week, our backyard, there was 24 people with about six or eight pies and a big 90s number cake. That's the first time I've ever had a number cake. You know, two big cakes and carved into 90. Now, our son has had a, a number cake since he was six years old, and he's now 64. So he's had about 58 of them or 60 of them. I've got one now, but maybe... <laughs> I think either your mother, you want to talk to your mother, Beth, and see if she would like to maybe become a social influencer, or maybe I would. One of us should become a social influencer and suggest that 90s is pie and number cake. <laughs> so uh, that's the big deal of turning 90. When I was getting close, within a few months, I started to tell people that I planned to do this tribute here at the church, and as it got closer and closer, even two weeks ago, I ended up in the hospital with another infection. So, you know, it's never a sure thing. Uh, it's sort of, it wasn't really a bucket list. It was just something I wanted to do. Uh, and why sing, you might say? Why do you want to sing? Well, I've sung all my life. When I was two years old, three years old, my mother had my two older sisters and I in a little trio, and we sang, of course, German, little German songs about children and birds and bees and stuff. And we went to all of the church events, and we went to about three or four of those one-room school concerts to perform. That, my mother was very much in, into music, too. And, of course, I, I picked a wife whose dad was a great musician, and he had a band at Chrono for uh, when I was 12 years old. I played at my maternal grandfather's funeral in 1945. At age 12, we played at the cemetery, my two sisters and I again, because it made a nice little trio. So singing has been one of the cornerstones of my life, and I feel so blessed that God has continued to allow me to use my voice, although not what it used to be. So I'm going to start off by singing uh, Blessed Assurance. And washed in his blood and 
Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight, angels descending bring from above their echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness and lost in his love. God is indeed great, and great is his faithfulness. He, he stands beside us. He is with us all the way. My health has not been the best. I've had two open-heart surgeries. I've had uh, both knees replaced. I've had a great deal of trouble with kidney stones. Uh, and even two weeks ago, I was back flat on my feet with an infection. I went to the uh, emergency two weeks ago last night. So, you know, it's never... a you never know when your life will end, but God apparently has this 7.3 billion light years wide universe. And somewhere on there, he's got a desk that wide, and he looks every morning and he checks it, he says, nope, not today for Will Flypey. And I continue. <laughs> so music has been a cornerstone of my life, and I'm going to sing now, Great is Thy Faithfulness. is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not the compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love.
peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings all mine with ten thousand beside mercy like the wideness of the sea there's a kindness in his justice which is more than liberty there is no place where earth's sorrows are more felt than up in heaven there is no where earth's failings have such kindly judgment given. There is welcome for the sinner and more graces for the good. There is mercy with the Savior. There is he grace enough for thousands of new worlds as great as this. There is room for fresh creations in that upper home of bliss. Tis not all we owe to Jesus. It is something more than all, greater good because of evil, larger mercy since the fall. If our love were but more simple, we should take him at his word, <clears throat> and our lives would be all sunshine in the sweetness of the Lord. Now I said, <clears throat> I said at the beginning that I, uh, that I wanted to make a uh, statement here today. I want to make a a, uh, it's one of the things that happens when you turn 90, the words aren't there anymore. Uh, I want to make a, a acknowledgement for Jesus. And I want you to know that I believe that Jesus is our Savior and that he died for us and shed his blood for us and that we have nothing to fear. He told his disciples over and over again, be at peace, don't be fearful. Now, uh, Jesus said, if you acknowledge me before man, I will acknowledge you before my Father which is in heaven. And I don't want to miss that promise, and none of us should. So here's a song that uh, I find another one of these songs that gives me great peace and comfort when there's problems in my life. I've had a fantastic uh, family I've got a wonderful spouse that's going on seven decades, and she has been the cornerstone, the other cornerstone of my life. Our family is a great bunch of children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. We had 24 in the backyard last Sunday. But here is my song about peace, when peace like a river.
When peace like a river attendeth my way, <clears throat> when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul it is well a scroll the trumpet shall sound and the Lord will descend even so it is well with our souls it is well with my Thank you for this indulgence. could just stay standing. The Lord be with you. I'll invite you to join me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. God, whose fingers sculpt sun and moon and curl the baby's ear, spirit brooding over chaos before the naming of the day, Savior sending us to earth's ends with water and words, startle us with the grace, love, and communion of your unity in diversity, that we may live to the praise of your majestic name. Amen. Please be seated. Our first uh, reading is, will be Psalm 8 read responsibly. Pastor Lynn will begin, and the words will be on the screen for you. Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name throughout the earth. You made your glory higher than the heaven. You laid a strong foundation because of your foes in order to stop vengeful enemies. When I look up at your skies, at what your fingers made, the moon and the stars that you set firmly in place, what are human beings that you think about them? What are human beings that you pay attention to them? You've made them only slightly less than divine, crowning them with glory and grandeur. You've let them rule over your handiwork, putting everything under their feet. 
all sheep and all cattle, the wild animals too, the birds in the sky, the fish of the ocean, everything that travels the pathways of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name throughout the earth. And we continue with a reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Finally, children of God, goodbye. Put things in order. Respond to my encouragement. Be in harmony with each other and live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Say hello to each other with a holy kiss. All of God's people say hello to you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Here ends the reading. Please rise as we sing the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus came near and spoke to them. I've received all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. Look, I myself will be with you every day until the end of this present age. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I'm going to call on Carrie Prostad, our parish worker, for uh, Sunday school recognition. Good morning, everybody. I would like to invite up all the Sunday school teachers and helpers and all the kids. Even if you only came to Sunday school once this year or if today's your first day, we still want to celebrate you today. So come on up and have a seat on the stairs. You can be on the top step, on the bottom. Look at all these guys. So this year in Sunday school, we had over 40 different children come for class. And there, there were a few times where there were over 30 at a time and it was busy and loud, but it was amazing. So. I want to call you guys up by your name and then you're just going to stand up by Emily because everyone wants to recognize and celebrate you, okay? So when I call your name, Harper, 
Come on up here, Harper. Emily. Zach and Noah, are you up here? Where is Zach and Noah? There you guys are. Come on up. Jeslyn. And Jeslyn also invited a friend today. Is Cammie up here too? All right. How many people out here are inviting friends to church? Because these kids are. So, hi, Cammie. Uh, is Lexi up here? And Cooper? Rowan? And Barrett? Where's Barrett? Brooklyn? Brooklyn also makes sure she invites someone every week. Sometimes, usually it's dad. Sometimes, you even brought granddad one time. Blake? Savannah? Owen? Emily? Ava? Is Adler up here? Now, can you take your sister wins for her? Because she's not here today, right? Yeah. And do we have Oscar here? And can you take one for Benny and Rocky? Okay, for your sisters. Is Everest here? And Ginny? And we've got Lily. Lily, did you bring a friend today too? Carson? Again, who else has a friend here? This is what being invi an inviting church is all about. And do we have Alyssa? And Madison? And Parker? And Jeslyn, could you give one to Jayton as well? He couldn't make it today. So this is our 22-23 Sunday School class. <laughs> we couldn't make Sunday School happen without helping hands. So I would like to start by thanking all the moms and the dads and the grandmas and grandpas and omas that come each week making sure that the kids get to Sunday school. So thank you to you guys as well. And then finally, all the big kids in the back that also come up to help out. So we've got some helpers and some teachers, and I am so thankful for you guys each week. They listen to direction, they take initiative to get things done to make it the best class for these kids. So I'll start with... Emily. Robin. April. Mary. Alexander. And just a side note, Mary, April, and Alexander are three of the five youth that are attending Clay this summer. So I'm really excited for them to learn some new stuff at Clay that they can bring back to the Sunday school room for next year. Oh, yeah, two more. And Julie. 
You're lucky when your, your mom's the Sunday school teacher and you happen to have a Sunday off and your mom goes, oh, perfect, I need more hands. So that's been Julie all year. And then I'd also like to call Ron. Thank you, kids. Thank you, helpers. And thank you, teachers. While uh, the children are heading upstairs, I think we should also thank Carrie Frosted, yes? Thank you, you can be seated. I bet you some of you are wondering if you're gonna get your lunch. <laughs> Don't worry, this is a shorter sermon. I wrote it out so it wouldn't get too long because that's what happens if you don't write things out. This is, um, this is Holy Trinity Sunday, and I think you maybe have picked that up a little bit in some of the readings and in the messages and whatnot. And um, so that's what we're going to reflect on for a few minutes here, but I'm going to invite you to join me in a prayer to begin with. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you have called us through the Holy Spirit and given us the gift of Jesus to enlighten us, to redeem us, and to give us hope. We ask that as we reflect on the Trinity today, that uh, your presence with us would become more certain in some ways, that we might feel strength and comfort. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to begin by uh, asking this question. What can reflecting on the Holy Trinity reveal to us? Um, like, is this just a theological exercise or can it be something more? I'm going to suggest three things. In fact, this whole sermon is just packed with three. Three, three, threes. So here are the three things. We'll go to the next slide here, Jackson, please. The three things that I think we can uh, consider as we think about the Holy Trinity today is that first and foremost, God is relational in God's very being. The very nature of God is to be in relationship. And, uh, and so it should not surprise us that God wants to be in relationship with us and wants us to be in relationship with each other in a manner that is appropriate, that is in a manner that is God-centered. So that's the first thing. God is relational in God's very being. Second thing. God manifests unity in diversity. So we say that God is one God and yet three persons. And those three persons are quite distinct and unique. Uh, whether we're talking about God the Father or God the Creator. Whether we're talking about God uh, the Son, the, Jesus. Or we're talking about God the Holy Spirit. Those are all very different uh, persons, to use that terminology. And yet, there is a perfect unity within that diversity. That would also suggest to us then that unity does not need to come only from uniformity, which is sometimes the mistakes humans make. We think that the way to be united is that we all have to be exactly the same. Having people who are exactly the same around you may make you feel comfortable but it's not necessarily an expression of diversity and unity commingling. Third thing is that God dwells in the realm of mystery. If we try to understand the mystery of the Trinity, it's just simply too much. It's overwhelming. It doesn't make sense to us. Much like, I might add, uh, upper level uh, quantum physics. If you do any reading about quantum physics and you try and make sense of it, you can't. 
you can only say this is what is because this is what our experiments have shown, but it doesn't make sense. So we should be content to dwell in the realm of mystery when we're talking about God and when we're thinking about God, that mystery is okay. We don't need to understand everything in order to appreciate it. So for example, I'm sure that most of you don't understand exactly how FM radio works, but you use it all the time. You appreciate it and enjoy it. And you don't need to understand how FM radio works. So let me just give you one quick example. Do you know that the FM stands for frequency modulation? And that the signal is carried on the fact that the signal modulates in frequency and how it modulates is how it carries the signal. You following me? No? Good. That's the whole point. <laughs> right? Okay, so we should be content to dwell in the realm of mystery, especially when it comes to some aspects of God's being. Then the second thing I want to do is I want to reflect on the Trinity using the formula that Paul used in the end of his uh, letter to the Corinthians. And this is where we get this uh, very famous sort of benediction, blessing, doxology kind of statement. This is how Paul ends his letter. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You've heard those words many times before. I'm going to look at each one of those uh, three words, grace, love, and fellowship, and tie them to different persons of the Trinity. And then we're going to see how this all connects with Martin Luther's explanation of the creed in the small catechism. So how, do, how many of you remember studying the small catechism as part of your confirmation instruction? Yeah. So, so hopefully these words for some of you will go, oh, I remember that. All right, let's start with grace. Let's go to the next point here, Jackson. So grace comes from a, a Greek word, or the, the, our English word grace comes from the Greek word charis, which can be translated uh, simply as God's merciful kindness and undeserved favor shown to us. So the thing that Luther wanted to emphasize is that grace cannot be earned. It is a gift. It is something that is freely given. And so it is God's nature that, uh, that we are given this gift freely, and we are given this gift through Jesus Christ. So this is what Luther had to say from his small catechism. So now we'll go to the next slide here. Luther's small catechism, that's Luther's rose. This is what he says in the section on Jesus uh, in the creed. He explains it this way. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as Christ is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. Uh, I remember years ago, Pastor Orville Kaminsky using this an acronym to explain grace. Grace, he said, is God's riches at Christ's expense. So it's, it's God's gift given to us through Jesus, through his life, death, and resurrection, and the certainty that we can be in relationship with God because of what Christ has done. That's grace. Let's move on to love. So the word here is uh, the, the word agape. Um, there's other words for, that we translate into English as love in the New Testament, but this one is the important one because this is the one that is most often connected with the love of God. So agape is a pure, willful, self-giving love that intentionally desires another's highest good. Okay, so it's not uh, a feeling of, you know, like 
attraction or, or warm fuzzies or anything like that. It is this intentional desire for another person's good or well-being. And it is self-giving. It is considering the needs of the other rather than the needs of the self. So Luther explained in his first uh, explanation of the first article how we see God's love expressed to us uh, as God the creator. So uh, let's go to the next slide here. So this is Luther's quote. I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that God has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason, and all my senses, and still takes care of them. God also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, spouse and children, land, animals, and all I have. God richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. God defends me against all danger and guards me and protects me from all evil. All this God does out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness in me. So here Luther ties in the love of God with the love of a parent. Uh, and, and a child doesn't earn the parent's love, it's just there. And those of you who are parents or grandparents know that it is a self-giving kind of love. That's required, right? Self-giving kind of love. You have to put the needs of your child ahead of your own. And that's the kind of love that uh, God has for us. So that leads us now to the third word, and this is related to the Holy Spirit. So the first word, grace, is related to Christ. The second word, love, is related to God. Uh, and the third word uh, is fellowship, and that's related to the Holy Spirit. So let's go to the slide here. So fellowship, the, the Greek word is koinonia, and it is the Spirit's gift to the church. And specifically, koinonia is a relationship between God and us that leads to active participation in Christian community. So there's this sense of this connection between God and us, that, that the Holy Spirit draws us to God, and then we, uh, being drawn to God, are also then connected with others who have been drawn to God. And that connection then goes both ways, hey? So this is what Luther says about the Holy Spirit in the Catechism. I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with spiritual gifts, sanctified and kept me in true faith. In the same way the Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, the Spirit daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, God will raise me up and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ through the work of the Spirit. So what Luther is saying here is he's saying that the Spirit is what gathers us together. And it has to be the work of the Spirit because otherwise there could not be unity in diversity. In order to get past the, 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 the difficulty that we have when interacting with people who are different than us, whether different ages, different genders, different races, different cultures, different backgrounds, different economic status, all this stuff, in order to relate to them in a meaningful way, that requires the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit calls us together and then enables us to do more than we could ever imagine. And that has been borne out by history as the Christian church has spread over the whole world from a little small group in the corner of the Roman Empire now to over the whole world. We are connected to one another. We have koinonia, we have fellowship with one another because of the Holy Spirit. So, now that we've kind of reflected on these three things, what are some responses? In other words, how then should this make any difference in our lives to know 
these things about the Trinity? I'm going to suggest three responses. So here's the three responses. Can we have the next? Oh, sorry, no, another one. There we go, that's the one. So the first thing is to be open to God's transforming grace. And I'm going to pair this with a phrase from Paul's conclusion to the letters in, uh, in, in to the Corinthians, in his second letter to the Corinthians. This is uh, what Paul says just before the benediction that you heard earlier. He says, respond to my encouragement. So we need to be open to God's grace. We have to respond by being open to what God is doing in our midst. And if we are open to what God is doing, then we can be transformed. And so we be open. We respond to the encouragement given to us through scriptures and through other uh, people of faith. The second response is to share the love of God through actions. And this is related to Paul's uh, line when he says uh, to be in harmony with each other. So harmony, by the way, is not created by having the same note. It's by having different notes that relate to each other in a way that is pleasant, in a way that is pleasing, in a way that is peaceful, we could say. That's harmony. So we are to be in harmony with each other, and being in harmony with each other then is ex an expression of this love of God. This is God's love. Well, the way it's put by John is we love because God first loved us. And so we are to love one another. And finally, the third response is to participate in the community of faith. Or, as, uh, as Paul wrote, to live in peace. So to be in this community, but to do so in a way that is peaceful, centered on, on God, on the, on the Holy Trinity, and allowing ourselves to be part of this amazing kingdom of God that is unfolding on the earth, this realm of God that is happening through us, in us, around us. Again, always threes, things are happening in threes. And the nice thing about threes versus two is we know that two can become polarized. And we see enough polarization in society. But three provides a more balanced approach as we sort of balance each other off and uh, help each other out, lift each other up, strengthen each other. That's fellowship. It's koinonia. And it's a good thing to be intentional about. And so, with those words in mind, then we can hear afresh the uh, blessing that Paul gives at the very end of his letter. So this is his last final words after all of his goodbyes and take care ofs and so on and so forth. He says these words. Hear these words, they're for you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. For our uh, hymn of the day, <coughs> excuse me, uh, once again, it's a hymn by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette. She always has the right words. And uh, it's a familiar tune. You'll recognize it. I'll invite you to stand as we sing together the hymn, um, Go Walk With God.
please join with me in the affirmation of faith. We believe in one God who is creator, maker of all we see and all we don't see, who is ruler of the universe, source of all creation. We believe in one God who is Jesus Christ, God from God, light from light, true God and true human. He is the one with the creator, the word made flesh, our Messiah, savior of all creation. We believe in one God who is Holy Spirit, breath of God moving among us, who is one with the creator, one with the Christ, our comforter and our guide, mentor of all creation. Please be seated for the prayers. Bound together in Christ, in the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us pray with one heart and mind to our God, saying, Holy Trinity, hear us. That the love which passes ceaselessly between the Father and the Son in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may renew and deepen the life of each Christian and draw us all gathered here into your unending life, we pray, Holy Trinity, hear us. For the leaders of the church, especially National Bishop Susan Johnson, Saskatchewan Synod Bishop Sid Haugen, and his assistant, Reverend Dr. Ali Tote. For the leaders of nations, that they may discern the ways to overcome divisions and mistrust, and may reflect your unity in every aspect of common life. We pray, Holy Trinity, hear us. That your self-disclosure in Christ and your enduring presence among us as a spirit may help us to understand both you and ourselves made in your image and likeness. We pray, Holy, Holy Trinity, hear us. For our families, our households, and our communities, that they may be places of communion and mutual support, which build us up and strengthen us in grace and truth, we pray. Holy Trinity, hear us. Thankful for our world, which you made through Christ and renewed in the power of his resurrection, that we may be wise and careful stewards of creation. We pray, Holy Trinity, hear us. In the power of the Spirit who joins our prayer to Christ's enduring intercession, we pray for the sick, the suffering, and all who stand in need. In this day, we pray for those in hospital, Brian Hillis and Leona Leakes, and we also pray for those convalescing in William Booth, Anansiata Mokala Zimba and Ernie Brandt. For healing for all the world, we pray. Holy Trinity, hear us. Gracious God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father, accept our prayers this day. By the inner workings of your spirit, deepen our communion with you, the source and goal of our life, and make us more and more signs of your enduring love. This we pray through Christ, who lives and works with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray as Jesus taught us, our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with the offertory prayer. Please join me. You have given us more, O oh God, than we could ever repay. You have filled us in ways we didn't even know we needed. Awakened again to both the giver and the gifts, we respond in gratitude, passing along your grace. Take the offerings of our lives and our hearts, O oh God, and use them to care for your family and for your world. Amen. 
Please stand for our sending song, What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine. Before we uh, head outside for our picnic, I thought I would offer a table grace now. That way we can just dig right in. I'm sure that the council folks have got stuff all prepared for us. So let us pray. O God, who gives all that is good, may your blessing be upon our food. Your grace and laughter shine upon our fellowship. Your kindness be upon our tongues and your peace reside within us. And your love reign in our hearts. Amen. Receive this blessing. May the love of God and the grace of the Holy Spirit, of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. Um, and then just two brief announcements uh, before the sending. So Church Council has worked very, very hard to, uh, to put together this picnic for you. So please make sure you express your appreciation to them. <laughs> but I think they're all working really hard outside, so I don't think they heard that. Uh, and also, I forgot to mention that next Sunday we are having a Pride service. It will be our third annual Pride service. I remembered to get it in the Queen City Pride Guide. I remembered it to put it on the sign. Our Dennis, Pastor Dennis put it on the sign. Pastor Dennis made posters. Uh, Carrie put it on our Facebook page. And I forgot to put it on the announcement sheet. So anyway, uh, go in peace to love and serve the Lord.